Hey guys, and welcome back to another Imagine Force tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to be going over how to create a damage direction indicator. So, what this is going to do is on screen, it's going to come up with a nice little circle, and that's just going to point in the direction of which the AI or the enemy is, or whatever it is that damaged you. So, I'm going to hit play and show you what we're going to make today. You'll see that if this runs into me, it's going to damage me, and this is going to come up on screen, point to the direction in which that act is, which damaged me, and this is going to update for whichever the latest damage actor is. So again, this is a nice little system which you sometimes get in combat games. For example, the main one I can think of right now is Batman. It's always going to point towards the last direction in which you got damaged from. So this is what we'll be setting up and making today. So without further ado, let me show you this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create the widget blueprint. And this is the thing that's going to hold in the image which is going to point in the direction. So we're going to right click, go to user interface, create a widget blueprint, and I'm just going to call this damage indicator like so opening it up straight away in here i'm going to add in an image with this image brush being the damage indicator which i have created and the one which i want to use and i'm going to make sure to set the size to be the same image size so that's 562 on the x and 634 on the y now if you want to use this same image as well i will leave a download link to it in the description down below i've just very very quickly made it in photoshop like this and again i've made this one so you can use it copyright free or you could find your own one, i.e. create your own one, or find one which is already made elsewhere as well. And you're just going to drag and drop that in to import it like so. Then again, do all this, and I'm just going to anchor this to the center of the screen. So set the anchor to the middle of the screen, and I'm just going to move this up so it's lined up perfectly centered as well. So again, put all of this in and set it up how you want. For me, that is going to work perfectly fine. I'm going to compile and save that. Then we're going to go over to the event graph of this widget blueprint. I'm going to delete event preconstruct but keep event construct and event tick. Off of event construct, we're going to create a reference to our character blueprint. So I'm going to cast to my character, which for me is the third person character, but for you could be third, first, whatever you've named it. The object is obviously going to be get player character, as you can see there. What we're going to do is right click as third person character, promote it to variable, and name this character reference, just so again we have nice and easy access to it later on. And off event tick, this here is where we're going to actually be doing the code for where the image should be pointing. So this is nice and simple. We're going to drag and drop a reference to our character reference here, and we're also going to create another variable. So we're going to hit plus variable here, naming this one causer or damager or enemy or anything along those lines, which makes sense for you. This is going to hold a reference to what it is that damaged you. And then we're going to change this to be an actor object reference. So go to actor and then select object reference there compile and save that and we're going to drag that onto our event graph as well. Out of both of these we're going to get actor location once again for both of them because we want to know the location of where both of these are i.e. the location of the player and the location of the enemy which damaged the player and we want to find the lookout rotation between these two. So very simply we're going to drag out of our player's location and find look at rotation that being the start and target being the enemy's location. We're going to right click return value and split the structure pin as we only want to mess about with the Z value. So again, that's going to be the direction in which we're looking at. So if I were to rotate this on the Z, this is the way which the player is going to be looking, which is obviously how we want it to be. So back in here, again, we're going to get the Z. Out of this, we're going to get a float minus a float. Now the reason we're doing a minus here is because this is going to work perfectly for the direction between the player and the enemy. But what we want is the rotation between the player's direction and the enemy. So where the player is currently looking, not just where the mesh is facing, but where they're actually looking as well, just so it makes a bit more sense for the player. So to do that, we're going to drag out our character reference and get the control rotation, as that's the current rotation of which the player is facing, so where they are viewing. Right click that return value, split the structure pin, and again, connect up the Z like so. So we now have something like this. And this value here is the direction in which the arrow should be pointing, because this is now always going to be pointing directly towards the enemy. So again, it's from the player to the enemy. So to actually rotate the image now, all we're going to do is drag in a reference to our image, drag out of it, and set render transform angle like so, and that is going to rotate it. Connecting that into event tick, so it's always going to do it, and the angle going into that float minus a float there. Compile and save that. And there's one other thing we do need to do here, because this is going to work. However, because this is event tick, it's always going to be firing off. We only want to fire this off if we actually have a valid causer here. So if there's no causer, there's nowhere to point, so we don't want to try and point it. 
So we're going to get another reference to causa there. So we get causa. And out of this, we're just going to get an is valid node with the question mark like so. Connecting that into event tick and is valid goes into the set render transform angle with is not valid goes into nothing. So we'll compile, save that. And that is all of the code that we need to set up inside of our widget blueprint. So again, when we have an actual causa which damaged the player, it's going to get the player's location, get the enemy's location, and just constantly look towards and point towards that enemy so the player knows where they are. So that's going to work perfectly for us. So we're going to close that like so. Once we're going to minimize that, that's the AI, which I'll show you later on. And what we're going to do now is we're going to open up our character blueprint to finish setting up this code. So we're going to go to third person BP, blueprints, third person character, and this here is my damage code, which I already have set up. I imagine you will also already have this set up, but if you don't, you're going to want to use this same code which I have here, which I have a link to in the description down below of a video where I do go over this. So you might have your own damage system set up, but I would really recommend using the event any damage node, as that is going to make this whole system work a lot more efficiently and better as well. So again, this is what I've got set up so far. Just above this, I'm going to right click and get event begin play. And if you've already used it, hold down S, left click to get a sequence, connecting that into there, with then zero going to the code you have now, and then one going to the code you're about to do. But I don't need that, so I'm just going to delete it like so. Off of event begin play, or well then one, I'm going to create a widget, with this widget being the one we just set up, which I named the damage indicator, like so. Then we're going to right click return value, promote it to a variable, and I'm just going to name this one damage widget, like so, as that makes the most sense to me compile and save that. This is so again, we now have a nice, easy and quick reference to this so we can access all the stuff inside of it, adding it to the screen, removing it and all the good stuff which we're gonna need to do. So let's go and do that now. So again, we're gonna do this on our already existing damage system. So I'm just gonna do this at the end of the code I have now, which is simply decreasing the player's health and playing a sound so I know when they did get damaged. So the first thing I want to do is I want to see if this widget was already on screen. So to do that, I'm going to drag in a reference to our damage widget here, drag out of this and simply use the node is in viewport. And that's now going to check to see if it is or isn't already on the player's screen and visible like so. This is a Boolean return value. So we're going to hold down B, left click to get a branch, connecting that into place sound 2D or whatever node you have there already. And the condition will be that return value there. So true is going to fire off if this is already on the screen. False means it isn't. So if it isn't, we then want to put it on screen. So again, this means we're only going to try and put it on screen if it isn't already there. So we're going to get damage widget like so, drag out this, add to viewport, connecting that into false of the branch. So again, if the player's been damaged and the widget isn't already on screen, it's now going to be on screen. What we also want to do is we want to set the causer so we actually know which enemy damaged the player. So drag out of damage widget and set causer like so. So again, we now know what it was which damaged the enemy. But how are we going to actually know what it is which damaged the enemy? Well, this is why I said to use the event any damage node, because we can just drag out a damage causer and connect that straight into the set causer there. And now we know exactly what it is which damaged the player. So we now also know where it is to get the location of it, like so. I'm just going to double click these to get some root nodes to keep it looking nice and organized. But again, this is why I recommend using this. So you know what it is which actually damaged the enemy or the player, sorry. And so after we've done that, what we're going to do is get a re-triggerable delay. And I'm going to set the duration of this to be five seconds. The duration of this is how long you want the widget to stay on screen for. So I want it to be on screen for a total of five seconds, but you can set this to whatever you want. And it's re-triggerable because what this means is if the player gets damaged and then four seconds later they get damaged again, this is going to stay on screen for another five seconds because the delay will restart. So if the player keeps constantly getting damaged, the widget is still going to stay on screen, always pointing the player towards where they're getting damaged from. But if five seconds have passed and they haven't been damaged again, it's going to be taken off of the screen. And to take it off the screen, we get our damage widget and simply remove from parent to again, take it off of the screen perfectly like so. And we're going to compile and save that. Now, the only thing we need to do is we also need to set the causer off of true here. So again, if the player gets damaged while this is already on screen, we again don't want to put it on the screen again, but we do want to set the causer so we can now update which enemy was the last one to damage the player. So we're going to get our damage widget, set causer like so, connecting that into true of the branch, 
and the cause of the target is going to again be this line down here or just the damage causer off of event any damage. So I'm going to double click that to get root node connecting it in there like so. Compile would save that and that is now this code perfectly working as well. So again when the player gets damaged it's going to put the widget on screen if it isn't already, tell the code which enemy it was which damaged the player and take it off screen when they haven't been damaged again. And if they have been damaged while it's still on screen, it's going to update which was the last enemy to damage the player. So again, that's what we need to do there. So we're going to close that like so. And the last thing we're going to show you is just the code I have for my AI, or just the enemies in which damage the player. So what I've done is just a very simple chase code here. And when they reach the player, they're going to damage the player. And to do that, we want to use the apply damage node, because that then calls the event any damage node which we just used. And when you do use this node, make sure that in the damage causer you put self so that's just get a reference to self or you just write in the enemy which did damage the player so again the code will then work because we then know which enemy or which actor actually damaged the player so we're going to close that like so and this is now the code perfectly done for us now you'll notice at the beginning of the video i did have it fade in and fade off screen and i do have another video going over how to do that not specifically for this example but it was just fading widgets on and off screen and you should be able to implement it in very easily after watching that video. And if you don't quite understand it, message me on Discord and I can give you some more specific help towards it. But I'm not going to go over that in this video because it's not too necessary for this system. I just want to focus on how to get this working in this one. But I showed you at the beginning just to show you it is possible. So let's hit play and test this out. So you'll see that if this enemy walks into us, what's going to happen is this does show up on screen. Now that shape looks a little squashed and not perfect. So I imagine what I did was in the widget, I just didn't do the sizing properly. So that's 552 by 634. I put 562 by 634. So let me just change that to 552, compile, and let's see if this looks any better. That doesn't look too different. But it's also because I put 534 when it should have been 634. So that looks a lot better now. Just to double check, let me copy and paste these values in here just so it is going to be perfect to what it should be. And let me recenter this again, like so. So sorry about that, I just misread the number. So again, this now looks perfect. So it was still working, it just didn't look perfectly how I wanted. But you see, when we get damaged by an enemy, what's going to happen is it's going to update to always point towards the last known location of that enemy. So we always know where they are, so we know where we got damaged from, which again is great in combat games. So I think that'll be it for this video, which we've done everything we want to do. We've set it up, so there's going to be a widget come off the screen, pointing towards the direction in which the enemy is, which last damages, so we always know where they are. So thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, hit the like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.